In this video, we're going to focus on how we can filter two charts at once on, for example, a date picker here. So you can see here I have September 2 till 7 and the same goes down here. So let's say here I want to have now September 1. And as you can see, once I select that, it changes both items. And same here, if I go now to number 5, we have now 5, 6 and 7. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to filter dates on two charts at once in ChartJS. So the first thing what we need is to get a boiler template which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. Once you're on here and this link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here copy this boiler template. If you want to understand this code watch this video here. So then I'm just going to paste that in there, I will cut out this, put it in the title here and convert the size of the chart to 80%. Save, refresh, there we are, we have this, that looks beautiful. Next what we want to do is, uh, we want to put in at least an input and this input will be our date input. So we want to say here, uh, input type equals date and then what we want to do here as well is basically we can say here a minimum and a max and then we have to put in here well let's save this for now and after we have to define those dates in here so what i want to do is i want to convert this into a date but also i need to get the date adapter to make sure that this will be read once we change the scale so let's do that first so to get the date adapter what i need is we have to go to chartjs.org click on ecosystem scroll down here and then we have here the adapters select that you have three options here go for these two up this one has been deprecated or at least the moment is not being updated anymore so avoid that one i use this one here because we only need one javascript file to add and it's fine for me so scroll down here and just copy this line of code here this one here which shows here the date adapter fns bundle copy that and then we put that in here. Make sure it loads after the chart.js library. So this is very important. Once we did this, what I want to do now is I want to convert basically this scale here into a date adapter. So what I'm going to say here is X, then I'm going to see a type. Then we say here will be time because we want the time adapter basically. And then we're going to say here the time, we can select this. And then what we can say here in the time, we're going to say the unit that we want to specify and then we're going to say here let's say day very straightforward if i save this ignore that and then make sure we have a comma here or else we get an error of course there we are so right now it works but we have nothing that's been recognized as a time in this uh, date adapter so what i want to do here convert these into dates so i'm going to say here let's make this simple uh, 0901 for September 1 and I'm going to copy this and make sure we have multiple commas here as well let's copy every comma oh, like that and then we have here uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 all right then of course here specify this correctly 2 3 4 5 six and seven of course save refresh now it recognizes the date you can see here the date exactly so this works so now what i want to do is i want to filter basically if i want to filter two charts what we have to do is we have to duplicate the charts as well so what i'm going to do now just quickly to duplicate this i'm going to duplicate the entire structure here and i'm going to paste it in there and i will say here chart number two my chart two config will be number two this will be number two the data here we cannot put a number two here because that's just not allowed so we have to put in here data number two but everything else here maintains and this here say data number two and then here what i will make out of this i'll make this a different value and i'll give this a single color the red color so if i save that refresh all right interesting of course it doesn't work yet why we need to create a new canvas so let's add up another canvas in here copy this put that in there and then we say the id number two because that's the second chart so we have this here and i realize that this needs to be much much smaller than the 80 percent i have here so let's say 45 percent save refresh all right 
So what I want to do is eventually, if I select here the specific dates, or at least from this, I want to select the date, and this will work only because they are nicely aligned on the same date. So if I change this and I say here, for example, I want to go here September number three, we want to update everything here till or starting from September three. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we're going to play with the minimum and maximum values. And that's the easiest one to do. We're going to say here min. Well, let's do here min value. And let's say min value by default. If I would say here, for example, the year, uh, and I would just say here number two. If I save this, look what will happen. Automatically, this will recognize this as number two as the starting point. So what we want to do is basically do this by default. And then later on, once we update it, we will update this specific value. Of course, here, by, uh, uh, by default, I want to get the official value, whatever is recognized on that chart. So for that, I'm going to use a trick. I'm going to say CTX here, and we use a callback functionality. And what we're going to say here, to return. And what are we going to return? Well, let me show you what this CTX does. This CTX gives us access to the full chart object. So what I want to do now here is basically get this value here. But of course, I don't know what is this value. So I want to get here index number from the labels in index number zero. So that's what we're going to extract. So let's save this and open up the console log. You can see here we get the object, we get the scales. And uh, once we click on the scales, you should be able to see a chart here. And maybe we can even find the data here. I'm not sure if I see that here. I don't see data here. So in that case, we go for chart. In the chart, we go to the data and the data object is this object here specifically. From there on, we can go to the labels and there we are. Do I see anywhere else maybe a shorter version of labels? I think I don't see it. Maybe the ticks. Ticks could, uh, well, the ticks could be as well, could be used as well. It's one or the other. But in this case, what I will do is I'll just get the labels itself. So what I'm going to do here, I want to return and what I want to return is the ctx.chart.data. Remember, we go here to chart. And then from the chart, we go in into the data. Uh, that was this one here. And then here we go directly into the labels. Data.labels. And I'll say here index zero for now. Save. I refresh here. All right, that works. But if I do here now index number one. You can see exactly the same happens here. So this works nicely. So what I'm going to do now is it's going to copy this, put it in here. And of course, again, this will work only because the dates are aligned. With most charts, especially stock charts, you have like a bar chart and a line chart usually, those are always aligned with each other with a similar date structuring. So that's why we can do this. So if I refresh here now, both of them work. But of course, I'm not satisfied with this. What I want to do is I want to select here and select here, for example, the September 2, 3, or any one that I want. So what I'm going to do here, in the date, we have the minimum value. And let's say the minimum value would be 2020 to uh, 0901, which is September 1. That's the minimum value. So if I select this, that's the minimum value. And if I do the max value for this, I could say here the seven, here, seven, save. Select this, then you can see here we have this. Are we allowed to go here? Oh, apparently we are. Um, I guess maybe there's a different structure for that. I'll have to see on that. What am I missing? Or did I, oh, sorry, my bad. This should be max. That's why, save, refresh. If I select here, you can see here it really restricts us to the uh, area that we are in. All right, so this is fine, but of course I want to make sure that this will trigger and update everything immediately. So how do we do this? We go down here and then we're going to just going to create a new function. And this function we can call our date filter. And this date filter will have a parameter, which is the selected date. And that selected date we will specify here above. So basically here, we're going to say here on change, we want to trigger the date filter and then we say here this. And the this 
will be the reference to whatever or this this input itself this entire item and then later on we're going to extract the value of that so if I save this and here if I do now console log on select date you should see see here nicely the item so if you want to check the value of this if I refresh here open up developer tab and then we select something there we are you can see here we get this but we get everything and I don't want everything all I want is basically the value that we have selected so how to do that if I say here dot value save this refresh then we're going to select you can see here now we get the right item beautiful all right so what we're going to do now is basically this I want to say here my chart and I'm going to get here my chart because that's the chart object number one or at least this chart object then what I want to do here is I want to update specifically this point here the min value how do we get there from my chart to config and then from config to options scales X and min value so I say here my chart config options and then we say here um, scales dot min oh sorry X dot min because we want to focus on the horizontal scale which is the x-axis and then we're going to say here will be whatever the value that we have selected or the selected date would be then what we can do here is we say here my chart dot update I save that if I select now something all right that value works if I do one as you can see here it changes nicely so now all we have to do here is do exactly the same with the other item so you can say your config of my chart number two and then here my chart number two save refresh so now if I change this three six and one and of course you could do this same with a range or where you have the ultimate max value as well so you can do in both of them but this is basically the way how you can play around with the dates and filter dates on your chart so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to make it a filter and use your database with that in that case I'm going to recommend you this video here on how to filter dates from a PHP MySQL database to JavaScript in chart.js